just put you over. I want to put you on. You're going to be nationwide TV right now. <laughs> Go ahead. So do not fear, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. Train up those children. Yeah. Get the word in their spirit. And everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, God is good all the time. God is good. Amen. All the time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we're, we're happy tonight as everybody joins us and those of you that's watching by Facebook Live, praise God. I mean, it's glad that we can reach out. There's some that can't come to the services that would like to be here, but they're able to sit on Facebook Live, and, and that's exciting that we have the technology to do that. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we got some good friends of ours here with us tonight, Pastor Henry Sanders and, and his wife Naomi from Navasota, Texas. Well, Naomi's from... I don't know where she's from. California. Was that where you were born, California? Yeah, okay. California. She's a Californian. Amen. But she's been in Texas long enough to where she talks like a Texan and she walks like a Texan. <laughs> <laughs> so she is a Texan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, Brother Henry and I met in 1966. Come to find out, he started preaching the same year I started preaching in 1965. And uh, then 66, I started, I went down to Houston, Texas. The Lord spoke to me to go to Bible college down there at Southern Bible College. And, and uh, Brother Henry was enrolling at the same time. We met each other and our spirits just clicked. And we're brothers in the Lord. And sometimes people think we're, we're, we're real brothers, flesh brothers. His kids call me Uncle Clarence. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're happy to that they're here with us. And they've been good friends all these years and uh, God's blessed them in Navasota and we're going to see hear from them in just a minute and just let them bless us tonight amen amen well if you want to stand to your feet and let's get excited about Jesus hallelujah well Jesus got a hold of my life won't let me go he got into my heart he got into my soul so sad now I'm free and glad Jesus got a hold of my life won't let me go one more time Jesus got a hold of my life and won't let me go he got into my heart he got into my soul he used to be oh so sad Let God 
Amen. You know how God arises? Through our praise. Because he inhabits our praise. And when we begin to praise him, I, the devil can't stand it. Hallelujah. I, I, I tell you, I, I just do that every once in a while. I'll just, I'll just sing it again. Just make the devil mad. Let God arise. <laughs> down right there in Texas City, Texas and minister physical manifestation of healing to him. Amen. And anybody else have anybody on your heart tonight you want to just call their name out so we can agree with you in prayer for them? Anybody? I have to go pray for my son, David. David? He went oh. back to the doctor and he said he didn't have to go into his stomach. He was so afraid of his life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we just continue to hold him up. Believe God. And Shirley, did you have any? I have a real big friend that's in the hospital. I don't know what's going on. She's got a lot of issues. But uh, she's afraid to go home. Amen. The devil's putting a lot of fear there. 
Yeah. And it's just fear dominating and and uh, and no doubt, I mean, there is a physical problem, but I mean, the devil puts fear and magnifies it even bigger than what it is generally. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to believe the Lord. What's her name? Kathy. Kathy, okay. Praise God. Amen. What was your son's first name? David. David, I got it. <laughs> I'm learning. Amen. We're going to lift them up. Anybody else have anybody special on your heart you want us to believe God for tonight? Anybody? Praise God. Amen. Well, let's join hands if you can to that per with that person that's close to you, next to you. And the Bible said, if any two shall agree on earth as such in anything, it's done of the Father which is in heaven. I believe in prayer. And I believe there's power. There's no distance in prayer. God can move across the continent and move across the world and, and minister to people as we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up David, we lift up Jeremy, we lift up Kathy tonight. Lord, we lift up anyone else. Maybe there's someone that's watching by Facebook Live that has someone in their heart tonight. And Lord, we're going to put ourselves in agreement with them. We put ourselves in agreement and release the power of God on behalf of these individuals they're agreeing for and standing for. And Father, we just give you praise. We send the word of healing. We send the word of victory to them right now. We bind all spirits of fear that would try to magnify the problem in people's lives and in their minds. We just bind that fear and we loose them from that fear. Lord, that faith can arise in their hearts and they can have exactly what your word declares. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Devil, you're bound. You're rendered powerless. And Jesus won the victory at the cross 2,000 years ago. And because of that, by the blood, we're free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Well, we're so happy to have all of you here tonight and want you to just sit back and enjoy something good. And before we go any further, um, Brother Kruger, could you come and receive the offering for us tonight and uh, and just give people an opportunity to bless the Lord? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you tonight for the privilege of being here, for the blessings that we stood upon this Thank you, Lord, tonight for your presence. And we ask you to lead us and guide us and direct us. And Lord, help us tonight to give that every need to be met. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Either you know, and still don't. He he outdoes me a whole bunch. 
But you know what he did? He prayed. And he asked God to give him the ability to sing for the glory of the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. And God did that. And it, it's a blessing. It's anointing, number one. But it's a blessing. We thank God for it. I don't know if Naomi's going to sing or not. You're not going to sing that? What was that song? <laughs> Amen. Give them a good hand as they come tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight. And uh, yeah, we uh, we've known each other. Uh, we've known each other for years, and I guess I can't remember you know, much beyond when we met. Or we met when we was. Uh, 19 years old. And uh, you know, there's a little story about behind what Brother Francis just said. <clears throat> I, I I was telling Brother Kruger just a minute ago that uh, I had I had actually uh, was engaged to a girl at Bible college. I had been engaged about three years. And our whole ministry, my ministry, was kind of built around her because she could sing, man, she could just sing. And, and, and obviously I couldn't. Uh, and uh, we'd be asked to go preach, but I found out they wanted her to sing more than what we preach. <laughs> and uh, anyway, in God's perfect work of grace, uh, that relationship broke off and broke my heart. How I many know sometimes God breaks some things only to give you something better? Amen. And uh, you don't understand it at the time. But after that happened, uh, you know, I thought, what am I going to do? I, you know, I, I, I can't preach that well, and I certainly can't sing. And I had a lady in the church, played the, played the organ, Sister Renfro. She called me in one day, she said, Henry, God's told me that God's going to help you and give you a voice to sing. And at that point, I was, my voice is in that cracking time when I was trying to talk and sing, and it would just be, you know, in that. And uh, she had me to sing a song, I was born to serve the Lord. And I remember getting that, and we were trying to sing it, and I was, I was having a hard time just keeping on tune and everything. But the morning, the Sunday morning that I got ready to sing that, I got up there and I sang about halfway to that first verse and got into the chorus, and all of a sudden, there was an anointing hit me and changed my voice and changed my life. And from that time on, God has helped me. And what I've got, I know where it comes from. God gave it to me. But uh, God helped me to meet this young lady right here 50 years ago uh, in Bible college. And never did we dream that we'd have the journey we've had together so great, so wonderful. And uh, then uh, Brother Clarence had been pastor, I mean, uh, doing a little Bible study in Navasota when we was out in California pastoring. And we come back from California. And uh, I remember driving through Navasota on our way to Congo. And I told my wife, I can't remember if in Minnesota or Nacogdoches, where Clarence said he had that church, or that Bible study, sorry. And I remember we was going through a real bad part of town. My wife was seven months pregnant. And my little boy Jimmy was in the truck with us, a U-Haul truck. And I said, I don't remember if it was Minnesota or Nacogdoches, but I sure feel sorry for anybody that would take this work in Minnesota. Well, that's been 42 years ago. <laughs> and... Uh, God has blessed us. Amen. I just want to tell you all. I commend you. Uh, this is the Spirit of God had me put this in my heart while I go. For y'all staying by the stuff. I know that y'all been a larger church in the past. I know that there's been a lot of wonderful things happened here. I'm understanding that there's been a time that there was a, 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 a situation happen, but I'm gonna tell you something. God ain't through with you. God's not through with you. And I believe there's special reward for those people who will stay by the stuff. Because you will see what God really is gonna do you're holding, it's like you're holding the fort till the, till the army gets here. <laughs> Amen. You're, you're holding until
until God gets it done. God's going to do it again. Amen? Time after time I hear the people say to me, why don't we see miracles like there used to be? I still believe in miracles. God hears us when we pray. Cause God was God back yesterday. And God is God today. God can do it again and again and again. He's the same God today as He always has been yesterday. Now forever, He's always the same. There's no reason to doubt God can do it again. You've asked God to meet your needs, so why not trust in Him? He has done it all before, and He can do it all again. He's willing, much more willing than I could ever say to perform a mighty miracle in your life today. God can do it again and again and again. He's the same God today as He always has been yesterday. Now forever, He's always the same. There's no reason to doubt God can do it again. Oh, you've asked God to meet your needs, so why not trust in Him? He has done it all before, and He can do it all again. He's willing, much more willing than I could ever say, to perform a mighty miracle in your life today. God can do again and again and again he's the same God today as he always has been yesterday now forever he's always the same there's no reason to doubt God can do it again there's no reason to doubt God can do it again. You believe that? Whatever He's done in the past, He can do it again. I mean, there's there's no limitations. If there is any limitations, we put it on God. Because God can do whatever needs to be done at any time. Amen? You know, I was uh, looking through some stuff I had in my calendar. And uh, some things I had down, but just some, some nuggets. How many like some little nuggets? In other words, it's sermon sort of in a, in a thought. How many members uh, back in the 50s when there was a missionary family that was sent down into the uh, into Brazil, or whatever it was, into the, uh, the area where, where the, the Amazon River, and, and, and uh, the, the missionary men had a plane crash and they were killed. And their name was Agus. You remember that? They were single God missionaries back down there. Jim Elliott wrote his, had a saying. He says, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he can't lose. Did you get that? He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. We're making investments into eternity. We're making an investment into the hereafter. We're sending it in, ahead of us in serving Him and seeing what God can do with us. Amen. In your Christian walk, I think one of the things that uh, was one of the greatest revelations I grabbed a hold of a number of years ago was I'm in a covenant with God. I'm in a covenant because of what Jesus did for me. 
He paid the price by shedding his blood that satisfied the demand of the Father. And it made a blood covenant for me with the Father. And now then, he intercedes for me, he helps me, he sends his Holy Spirit back to, to increase my abilities to serve him. And I'm so glad I have a covenant with him. Amen. <laughs> I've got my feet planted deep in the good, good world, standing on the promises that I have heard, signed, sealed, delivered by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I'm not moved by what I feel, I'm only moved by the word that's real, the word that came. I'm a covenant man Living in the riches of my Lord and King I'm a covenant man Committed to Him And everything I do believe He will come again And there's one thing I'm gonna do till then Learn to live in the blessings of Abraham. There's one thing he wants me to be, to abide in him and his word in me. And everything I ask him, he will do. Oh, when you're under the covenant of the land, you're a blood brother of the great I am. You're the new thing came to you. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do. And there's one thing I'm going to do till then. Learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. You know what? Say with me. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do. There's one thing I'm going to do till the Learn to live in the blessings of Abraham. Learn to live in the blessings of Abraham. For a long time, I read the Bible because it was like the Christian thing to do. I didn't see it as being a a book of promises. You know, in Bible college, we study it, find out the history. We try to find out what we need to do for Old Testament survey, New Testament survey, and all. But you know, one day I found out that this Bible was a love letter to me. And it was written from the heart of a father that says, Son, I've given you an inheritance. And I want you to get in here and find out what I left you. Because I promise it to you. I promise you I'll never leave you or forsake you. I promise I'll meet all of your needs according to my riches and glory. I promise you that there's nothing impossible to me. I, and he just kept on rolling promises out to me. I remember back when I was a young man started preaching, I read this verse and it was precious to me. But it didn't mean near as much as it does to me now. David said in Psalms 39, verse 25, or 37, 25, he says, I was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken or received begging for bread. I want to tell you, I have witnessed God's faithfulness. I found him to be, 
I found him to be faithful when I wasn't faithful. I found him to be there when I couldn't seem to get it together. I found his presence to be with me when I didn't even like me. I found him to be true to his word. I found that his love supersedes my sins and my failures. I found him that he's a friend that's to go closer to the Amen. I found him that he really cares. He really cares. Life is filled with heartaches and broken dreams. To live is not as always as easy as it seems. But God, He is so faithful, so very true.
promise that he's going to see you through. One of those nuggets I remember was yesterday's history. Tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. It's ours today. Today is all you got promised. It's what you do today that's going to determine your future. John Maxwell said one time, he said, people change when their pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain to change. That makes sense to you? Something we've got to do, but we've just put it off and put it off, but we're, we're in pain about it. It's when the pain of putting it off becomes more than the pain to change. How many knows that when we come to Jesus, sometimes the thing that holds us back is, well, we're going to have to live our life different. We're going to have to do some things that we haven't done. We're going to have to make some new priorities in our life. I'm going to tell you, our old life wasn't much better. In fact, it wasn't good at all. But when we put Jesus in the right place of our life, it was worth the transition, the change. Amen. I'm just going to share a little bit with you, and then we're done. I'll sing a couple more songs. But I want to say that uh, this little young lady over here has been playing the piano for me for 50 years. Uh, the first time I ever met her, she was sitting at a piano. I walked in the side door of this gym for him at our school, just sort of uh, lost, trying to figure out what God was going to do in my life. And I opened that door up, and there was some kids in there playing the piano, and I'm playing and singing, and, and uh, I had a set of drums in there that uh, I was walking in to see what was going on. And I opened that door up and seen this young lady sitting down playing the piano, her back to me, and the Spirit of God said, there's your wife. That's me. Somebody said, well, I don't know if that was really right or not. Well, it's been right for 50, 50 years. You know? And I tell you what, that night, God changed the destiny of my life with a young lady that has been such a blessing to me. And uh, God's given us four great children, ten great grand, ten grandchildren, two great grandchildren, and uh, I still got a beautiful wife. So we appreciate his faithfulness. You know, as I was thinking, what can you say to a, a, a body of people who have, uh, who have stood the test? What do you say to people who have stood by the stuff? What do you say to people who have uh, stuck when it been easy to run. What do you say? Well, first of all, I want to say, well done. Well done. Number two, I believe that y'all see the big picture, the bigger picture. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom. And, and, and it's about making sure. You know, and I'll be honest with you, it's not about a building. It's about people. You're the church. And, and, I, and I, as I was thinking about this, I thought, what, what makes us, what makes us stay, stay strong? What makes us stay? And I remember what Paul said over in Philippians chapter 3, and he, he says, let me say, I think it's 310, but I want to make sure here. He says, uh, yeah. He said, that I may know him, that I may know him. How many of you know him? See, there was a day I knew about her, but then there was a day I knew her. There's something about going beyond the acquaintance stage. It's something about going beyond just knowing about somebody and what they, uh, they've accomplished and what they've done. See, you can know Jesus historically. You can know him as the God uh, who, or, or who came as a woman, as a baby, and, and a manger, and 
lived his life sinless and did miracles and and uh, he was uh, died on the cross and was buried and rose again and went to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit back. You can know those things. You can know those things. But until it becomes revelation right here, and that's what God had to show me. I knew a lot. But it took me a while to know him. And you're not going to know him by just uh, going to church. You're not just going to know him by just learning, learning some scriptures. Those are all processes of it. But there's something happens. And Paul said this, I want to know him, listen, and the power of his resurrection. And here it goes. And the fellowship of his sufferings. We all want to know God in the the easy way. But when it comes to getting down into the heart of man and knowing God through the, the turmoils and finding out, listen, that no matter how bad it gets, he's still there. No matter how much you hurt and people have, have hurt you, that he is still there. That his promises never fade and never fail. That he is a God of his word. You know, I, uh, I I met her in January of, of uh, 1968, uh, I'm sorry, and, and we got married in July. And, and those five months, you know, when, when we, she was working at night and I was working in the daytime. We got to see each other maybe a day during the week, you know, in the, in the, on the weekends. And, and I kept thinking, you know, she's so sweet. She's so nice. She, she's, I see all these outward things that I like and I knew what God said. But you know what? It was on July 27th of 68 that we got married. And it was beginning a journey of our lives together that we've known each other. I'm just not talking about an intimate relationship. I'm talking about that we walk through the valleys together. We face hardships together. We, we, and you know what? I found her to be true. I found her to be strong. I found things I would have never known if we had not walked together. And what I'm getting to you right now is, is the fact that there's things that you're going through. Paul said it. He said, you, you got to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. And I thought, wow. I went back and, and, and read Acts chapter 9 where Paul was uh, just got saved. He was Saul. And Ananias came to him by the instructions of the Lord and gave God gave Ananias this, this uh, promise or this instruction. Now I'm going to read it to you. It's in Acts chapter 9. He says, uh, he says, I want you to, the Lord said, go your way for he, that Saul, was a chosen vessel of me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. All from the very beginning, Paul understood that part of the, the, the learning God's character, learning God's ability, knowing who God really is, was that he was going to have to do some suffering. You know, I'll be honest with you, I came out of the, I don't mean I came out of the faith camp, I came, I'm still in the faith camp, <laughs> okay, but but I'm going to tell you, I learned something, I learned that you can't know something until you get involved with something. And God got involved with us, and we got involved with him, and for his sake, he said, as Paul said, he said, I've suffered things for Christ's sake, but I found him to be so dear to me, so precious to me. In those dark and lonely hours, I found him to be the friend that stick up close to the brother. There's nothing that has built a wall between us. His preciousness is always there. And, and I uh, I remember over in uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, he said uh, this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 
Listen to what Paul says. Actually, what was happening here is this chapter 11, verse uh, uh, 22. There, there's people coming against Paul and, and telling him that they that he wasn't qualified and they were qualified. And, and, and Paul responds and says, well, they are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? He said, I speak as a fool. I'm more. In labors, more abundantly. In stripes, above measure. In prison, more frequent. In death, often. Of the Jews, five times received out of forty stripes, save one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. In, in journey, I've been often. In perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the sea, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and in painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which comes upon me daily, the cares of the church. He said, I have suffered it, but the one thing I find, a portion of scripture that has been always precious to me, is when Paul wrote his farewell letter to Timothy. You all remember that? He's in prison in Rome. And he says, uh, Timothy, I, this is the part where he says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Therefore, there's a way up for me a crown of righteousness, but not for me only, but all those that love me appearing. But in the first chapter, in the first chapter, verse 12, Paul, Paul alludes to something. Because in Philippians, he says, I want to know him. I want to know him. And just before he dies and gives his life, he says in verse 12, chapter, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. He said, I want to know him. He says, now I know him. I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. I have learned to know that he is a good God. He's faithful. He's a God of his word. No matter what he says, he will do. And he will be with me to the end. Because he's my closest friend. How did he learn those things? He learned them by the experience that he had. He found out that no matter where he was, he could be, he could be out there holding a great campaign and seeing thousands of people getting saved, or he could be in chains in the Roman prison, seeing a jailer getting saved, or he could be in the prison over at Philippi. When the jailer and all the people got saved when the earthquake came, when they prayed at midnight. You know, I don't know about you, I, I, I don't know if I've quite reached this place yet, but it's a good place to strive for that I can sing praises to God at midnight in the midst of my trials and my problems. But you know why you can do it? Because I know whom I have believed in and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know who I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Day. He is faithful to his word. He's faithful to you.
and he will not fail you. Amen? Amen. That you may know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen? <clears throat> This song puts life in perspective. You can have everything in the world and not have the peace of God. And you can have the peace of God and nothing else. And you can be joyful and happy because you have the most important thing. Acres of diamonds, mountains of gold, rivers of silver, jewels untold. More than acres of 
diamonds, more than mountains of gold. That's just the truth of the matter. You have Jesus, you got all you need. One guy say, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. And if you give me Jesus, I'll take the whole world. Amen. Hallelujah. I like to close with us singing us uh, a couple of courses together. Probably one of my favorite songs. I was looking through a songbook today, but Frank says, and I realized, I mean, thank God. Billy Graham went home to, to, to get his reward. His battle's over. He's received his voice. But I was uh, looking through the song book, and man, I bet that wrote a song page was written by a guy named Bill Gaither. And Bill has written songs that have really, literally transformed the, 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 the whole process of uh, understanding as ministry of song to the hearts of people and to the heart of God. Revelation knowledge was coming out. <clears throat> One of them is a song we're very familiar with. I'd like to close with it. Jesus, 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 there's something Oh 
Praise the Lord. Amen. 
I mean, glad you came. I'm glad I came. <laughs> Amen. Brother Henry and I, back years ago when I was had a radio ministry going from 1975 to 2003, <laughs> we, uh, he used to travel with me. We'd go have radio rallies over in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Lafayette, Louisiana, and all parts of Texas, and, and around, and well, we both preach a little bit, but uh, I guess I did the main preaching. He did a lot of the singing. Praise the Lord. But we made a great team. Amen. But I, I want to give you an opportunity tonight to uh, uh, to bless him. And he, Brother Henry didn't come here to, to to get an offering or nothing, but how, how many things that we can give a love offering unto the Lord and, and trust and just believe God to, to bless? Amen. Amen. So uh, I'm going to ask you if you, if you want to and, and can. Uh, if you want to just be able to bless the Lord, uh, we, we, we don't have a, do we have a basket in here? Just give him a nice offering. Okay. All right. We can just do that. All right. We'll just do that. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're just going to bless you with tonight's offering. Hallelujah. Let me just say, I, I come here just to be a blessing and to be with them. I just, and it, it, that's a very, that's an honor. Thank y'all so much. And You're welcome. Uh, that's we just come to spend time with y'all. Thank you. May God bless y'all for that. Amen. I, I would normally just say I wasn't going to receive, but I, God just spoke to me that that I preach sowing and reaping, and if I don't sow something, I won't reap. And I'm believing you that you're going to reap many, many times more Amen. Amen. For, for what the kingdom of God's going to do. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Well, God is good. 